Welcome back to the next part of this Magnum mini course. We are going to be creating the final animation and it looks like this. Now I've already brought in the ice cream right here and this wrapper. Now the wrapper doesn't look very good from the side but we already figured that out in the previous tutorial. So I'm going to press on one, place the camera right here by pressing control alt and zero. I will go into this output property and make it Instagram format 1080 by 1920. And let's place it somewhere over here so that it's in the middle. Now, what I'm going to do is I will take this wrapper and I'm not sure why it's so slow. And I will bring it over here with Y. And the first thing I'm going to do is have it come from this area, something like this, press I, and I will bring it backwards in a couple of frames, maybe one second even. I'll bring it right over there, like this, rotate it around just a little bit, press I, and then it's moving backwards. Then right here, I want it to transition, so I'm going to press R, X, X, and make a full rotation like this. Whoop, there you go. And somewhere in the middle of this animation, this should disappear and our ice cream should appear. And this is exactly what we are going to do. But first, let's make sure the animation looks smooth. Let's go into the graph editor. Let's drag this upwards, normalize. Let's go over here, a dot, and now we can see what we're doing. I want it to be fast in the beginning. This is especially true for the Y location. So I'm going to bring it backwards, something like this. Whoo. Yeah, it's moving out, Shoof. and then it should transition more into the rotation. What I find is that the rotation is starting somewhere over here, but it should already be starting while it's moving. So I'm going to select both of these keyframes, move it to the side. So I'm going to select this X keyframe, move it to the side, and then it's slowly moving into this as well. So grab the right handle, yeah, and now it's smoothly transitioning into the rotation instead of the rotation starting straight away. Whoop, like this. It can be a bit faster in the middle, so I will select this outer handle, move it to the left. Whoop, yeah, something like this. And somewhere in this middle right there, we want it to transition to this ice cream. Now, the way to do this is actually quite simple. I'm going to press on this wrapper, Shift S, cursor to select it. Let's add in a empty plane axis, then I will go and take this ice cream and move and bring them together by pressing Ctrl J, Shift S, selection to cursor, and we'll bring this down and maybe scale it up so it fits better with the size of this object, R and C, and this one can be connected to the empty, Ctrl P, keep transform, and otherwise the empty can be so select it first, then the gift wrapper, control P, keep transform. And now what happens, our ice cream is moving along perfectly with this gift wrapper. So the only thing we need to do is go over here and make sure that this is invisible on frame 24. It's underneath the cube, underneath the empty, and we can simply select the render right here. And I will select this, press I. So here it will not be visible. You can see this if you render it, it will not be visible. And then on frame 25, I will click this on, press I, and then it will be visible. And I will do the exact opposite for the gift wrapper. So for this one, uh, there's the cube. I will make sure that it's turned off right here. And on frame 24, it is turned on, like so. And pop, right here, on frame 26, we should only see the chocolate. And that is the case. I'm going to select this ice cream once more. Shift D, Y. Bring it right behind the other one. I will press Alt P to clear all the parents because it is parented to the empty right now. And now I can move this separately from the other one. So let's click on our camera view and the animation is done on frame 35. So select the empty, click on I, then select this ice cream. Let's bring it over here, press I. And then let's make sure that this ice cream is not visible at all until this very moment. So on frame 35, it should be turned on. And anything before that, it should be turned off. So let's see if that is the case. That is not the case because it has taken all the keyframes from this one as well. Cool. So first let's do this one, R and Y. That's, mm, I want it to move from the stick and not from this empty. So I will go over here, shift, right mouse click, go to 3D cursor as a pivot point, R and Y. 
bring this over here. Let's set this from 35 to 55, for example. R and Y this will be going this way. Press I. And I will select this one. Place the 3D cursor right there. We already placed a keyframe on number 35. 55, it should be going this direction. Press I. Pop. Very cool. Now let's select the empty and this ice cream. Then I will go over here, select everything and make sure that we get these handles, S and Y. I will take the left handles of the right keyframe as well, G and X, bring it over to this side. Pop, pop. Yeah, there you go. So the animation is going like this, pop. and it's showing itself. So all we need to do now is make sure that this is a different texture. I want this one to be the white magnum. So let's go to the shader editor. Let's select this. We have our chocolate material right here, copy it. And I will simply change these colors to look more like that yellowish one. I guess something like this should do the trick. Uh, one thing I'm noticing though, is that it is now turned around in its final animation uh, and we are not seeing the M right here, which we created. And I don't like that. So what I will do is go into the object properties tab, go to Delta transform and the rotation on the Z should be this. So 180 should do the trick. But now I notice that the white one also doesn't have the M. So in order to fix that, let's go to the object data properties and let's set the scale for the X and Y to minus one. Let's see, everything is looking good. Let's see if it didn't mess up our animation. It didn't. And now everything is fine. So all we need to do now is add some lighting in the background and then we will be done. So I will bring in the plane, RX 90, let's bring it in the background. Let's scale it up, make sure that only that is visible. Go to the shader editor, new. Let's add a color, maybe a dark brownish. And I will also set this to cycles. All right, so now we have this animation. It is going like this, turning around like so. And uh, perhaps we can make some changes to the background and bring some lighting in here. So let's add a light, area light. I will use Lumio in order to position it on this. Move it backwards, scale it upwards and increase the power a bit. Let's rotate it around this object to find a good spot. A bit more from the side like this, increase the power. Now let's add another one, Shift D. Let's go into Lumio. And perhaps this one can be shined from the back. So we'll click on two, use left and right mouse click at the same time. Press three, and then it will rotate around here. Give it a cool edge light. So something like this, and that makes it look a bit more premium. So this is what it was before. And now we have this making it look a whole lot better. Now, perhaps for the background, instead of what we are doing right now, let's turn off the point light. So now let's add a spotlight instead. So now let's go to the asset browser. Let's bring in the ultimate gobo pack, which I got right here. I will use a tree and I will use the real normal tree number two. Bring it in there, very good. Let's go into Lumio, increase the power. Let's increase the blend. Let's go to the shader editor and decrease the value, to make it a bit bigger and shine at it from the side. Increase the exposure. Let's increase the radius as well. And now that looks pretty premium if you ask me. All right, so this is me from the future. And what I find is that this transition didn't come out well enough. And I think we can make a slight improvement that will make it a whole lot better. So I'm going to select our wrapper, go to the data object properties tab right over here and click on shape keys twice. So now we have two keys and then I will go into edit mode, make sure that the first key is selected. And what I'm going to do is select this, turn on proportional editing by pressing O and follow the shape of the ice cream so that it's already turning into the shape of the ice cream before the transition even happens. And I'm also going to take all of this, for example, let's uh, select it like so, S and Y. So now if we play around with this value, it is already turning into the shape of the ice cream. And we're going to do this right before it is getting turned off. So let's say from frame 20, I'm going to press I. Let's go to frame 25. Let's increase the slider to one. Press I. And now it should be turning into this ice cream before it has even happened. So I'll give that a try. I will render this out 
And now let's make the rest of the animation, which you will see right now. Let's go over here. Let's turn on motion blur. Let's give this a designated folder because in the next video, I will show you exactly how I render all of my files nowadays. I use Betchy Blendy, which is a program I created. This allows you to select multiple blend files and render everything at once. I hope you enjoyed this mini course thus far and that you created a lot of cool things. If you are interested in getting the King of Light bundle pack where I got all of these gobos where I use Lumio, I also have this bundle pack with 365 gobos, which is also part of it. So if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description and I will see you in the next video. Coco Choco, chocolate, baby, 